you have, before we met you, yes. you were doing video podcasts, you were doing field shoots, you were doing a lot of the same kind of work, and you've always used your own Panasonic camera for these, right? Yeah, I, I, I have a set of Panasonic AG HMC 150s. They're 10 year old cameras, but they're 1080p, they do 60 frames a second. They're CCD, not CMOS, so it's really sensitive to low light. I love the richness of the color, I love the balance, but they're not great studio cameras. They're good field cameras because yeah. you know, you've got everything combined, but I wanted something that actually was designed to be inside of a studio, specifically within a podcast studio. So it couldn't be too expensive, it couldn't be too big, and it couldn't be too complicated. I've been waiting a very long time for that. I found it two years ago at NAB. Yes, in fact, we always at NAB, we used to be right next to the Black Magic booth, and I would always go over there and drool. Yeah. And I was very interested in these. The philosophy Black Magic has with these is a little different because these are basically parts oh, yeah. of a camera. You add pieces to this camera. What is this? So this one is this is the one that I ended up buying for my studio. This is the Black Magic Studio Micro or the Micro Studio. There's there's two versions that look like this. One's called the Cinema, one's called the Studio. This is the Studio. It's it's really designed for studio. There is no recording capability in this camera. Okay, that's really important. There is no recording capability. Right. Uh, you either will add a recorder after the fact, or if you're recording live in the studio, you don't need a recorder. You record it at the at the switcher. Uh, 4K though, right? 4K. So this is a this is a 4K sensor. It's I believe it's 13 millimeters by 7 millimeters. It's it's big. It's is that full frame? Is that, that what is we'd full. call full frame? That's full. Yeah. And it's a micro four thirds mount. That's what I find really interesting. Yeah. By the way, doesn't come with a lens even. Does not. So <laughs> this and a, you a need lot of cameras lens, are like this. But the micro four thirds system is great because no one company owns it. It's a standard, and there are many many choices. I brought Father Robert uh, several of our lenses from our Olympus OMD cameras, our micro four thirds cameras. Yeah, this is one so of So we could try them. That's this is the kit lens that comes with the uh, yeah so th OAP. this is not a super expensive piece of glass but the ability to swap glass makes this an incredible device in fact there we go so let's let's so zoom out better than your panasonic for instance if you want great depth of field you can get a a short lens that has a wide open aperture and get some nice depth of field if you need telephoto you could put that on there you can even this is a zoom lens so you can even use look at that that's a pretty good picture yeah and then for for inexpensive glass but be exactly right because here in the studio we had to put lenses on some of our cannons that they weren't designed to swap yeah, they're lenses. really a, they're really adapters so, yeah, you're you putting a lens on a lens, lens. It, yeah. it does something to the image yeah. quality here i can swap out the glass i can make it really really short focus i can make it a fast lens a slow lens i can go i can put this thing on should i put that's this on? a really high quality it's a little too long because it's a it's designed for a micro four thirds sensor which is a lot smaller than the full frame that's on uh, on this the the point though, it's kind of one of the reasons people use DSLRs uh, nowadays to shoot video, is having interchangeable lenses gives you kind of the professional capabilities of a cinematographer. You're doing more than, oh my gosh, that's a little long. This might be a little long. Yeah. <laughs> not, you, not, should, you would move the camera farther this back. Is, this is probably this. not a lens you're going to want to use in your podcast studio. Well, you just could saying. though, if the camera were over there. <laughs> Quality is good. You get to pick your own lenses, yes. so you can go cheap at first. And if you decide you really need that great thousand-dollar lens, you can add that down the road. Uh, the the variety of lenses on Micro Four Thirds is is, is out of control. It's staggering, it's, yeah, absolutely yeah. staggering. And the other other cool things about this is it's got both HDMI and on this side you've got the SDI, the Mini SDI. So pros, we use SDI with our. Uh, mixer from uh, precisely from TriCaster. So SDI is a more professional long throw choice, but a lot of people have HDMI capabilities, and so you have both. I, I get both, and what but what this allows me to do is I can actually output to both simultaneously at different resolutions. So I can output to the SDI at 4G at uh, at, at the 4K, same time at the same time, and it will output at 1080p through the HDMI. Why do you need both? Well, for example, if I want a monitor so that I can actually see what that camera is filming. Because it doesn't can, have a viewfinder either, by yeah, the way. There's no viewfinder, <clears throat> exactly. I could put a monitor next to it, and then I could still record ah. in 4K. In fact, that's what you're doing right here, right? Yeah, this is the, uh, this is the companion device. This is the video <laughs> assist. And by the way, you can tell I'm Filipino because I still have the plastic on it. <laughs> See, because <laughs> now it's no, on your sofa it's no longer new, Leo. Oh, what am I going to do? Oh, man. But uh, this, this is a $900 device. It's not just a screen that will take in 4K. This actually is a recorder. It, oh, interesting. It's got two SD card slots, and it will record in ProRes HD. Wow, that's what uh, Final Cut uses. That's exactly. Good quality. And, and this will record 4K. It will record 1080. It's got many inputs. I can record HDMI. So, for example, I, I have recorded video game sessions off my console with this thing. So is this 444, 422? What is it? This is uh, 422. 
Oh, that's very good quality. Yeah, yeah it's incredibly good quality. Very good quality. Uh, and it's, the thing about Black Magic is they designed it not for the prosumer. These are all a little higher These are end. Pro, yeah. Yeah, and so and yes. yet the price is so how much for the body alone? The, this body, if you were to buy it full price, would be thirteen hundred dollars. Okay. Um, it's like a camcorder. It's a camcorder. But you don't have a lens, you don't have a viewer, right. you don't have a recorder. Right. So you have to add all of that. Yeah. Because again, they're assuming that you're gonna be installing this in a studio, so you've got you've got to be building out your studio. Right. This is nine hundred dollars. But they've also got a smaller version, a five inch version of the assist that only records ten eighty P. It doesn't record 4K, okay. uh, that one goes for, I think it's $500? Uh, you know, a good monitor is an important thing when you're shooting, and right. it's better to have a big monitor than a little viewfinder on the camera. There's the little one. I, oh, and I will say, it's staggering to look at images through this monitor, because really here in the good. studio, we, we have so many consumer-level TVs, yeah, yeah. our colors are always off. This, this, is, color this is the color. It's color-corrected. This is how, what professionals want to look at. And this will even do things like, I can do zebraing, I can see well, you know, what the, the chroma looks like. Yeah, all yeah. the tools <clears throat> are built into this. Oh, and it, you know, it's, it's also it's a touchscreen, so it makes it kind of nice, easy to work with. Uh, battery life. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just let's just say no. Uh, if I were to take the battery again in a studio, it's going to be plugged in. Right? It's going to be plugged in. Um, in. I think there are a lot of people would like to have done. both a field camera and a studio camera, right? They have something for that. That's called the cinema. So the so cinema. So you should get the cinema if you're going to use it in the field. Precisely, because the cinema you can actually record to the unit. It doesn't have a, a monitor. But they really designed it for this. They designed it for qu for uh, for quadcopters. Oh, interesting. Because you can even control, pan, tilt, zoom, and record from your transmitter. It's not much bigger, as you can see, than the, than an action camera. Right. Something right. like the GoPro Hero. It's almost the same size, but the quality is much better. Well, I think we actually do have some links to videos that Blackmagic provided to us that show off what some of their uh, their quality is, and it's it's staggering. I mean, when you when you do it right, when you get the the right setting and the right glass, you can get once you like look at the, the depth of field that you're getting on this. Look at well, you know, where I'm fixing my focus. It's, uh, this is a piece of kit that is not for beginners because you have to choose what you're filming. There's so many cameras out there that are just turn it on and it will kind of give you everything. This lets you actually set your scene and I, I love that. Now that I'm building up my own studio, that's what I want. Yeah, I, 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 these are at the price point now where we could almost replace our Canon Vixias, which are basically consumer-grade yeah. camcorders. Well, we paid, what, $1,600? At the time, they were $1,600. bucks. they are now $800. Eight, but $800 plus a $300 media converter. We have to get a converter, converter on it. And this is, that, yeah. you know, $1,300. With SDI out. With no media converter, because yeah. it's SDI out. Yeah. It's, it, and what I've done with my studio is I've actually gotten a screens unit, which is a four-channel switcher that also streams out. So essentially, for under $3,000, I got a three-camera setup with wow. one for my computer, so I can show my screen, that can stream out to YouTube Live, to Facebook, That's to really Twitch. Great. It's all under three, under three grand. How, I mean, can you imagine doing that five years ago? Yeah, times have really changed. Every time Blackmagic releases something, it gets us excited yeah. because they are aiming at a high-quality product for pros and prosumers at a basically a consumer price and they've really done a nice job with this. This is the micro studio camera, a 4K body that you then add features to, but it can use, if you've got micro four thirds lenses, we're just using our old lenses. They yeah. look, they look, really look. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I really wanted to see what this would look like with your, your $10,000 lens, <laughs> but I mean, we have, have to get, get an, an adapter. adapter. It yeah. doesn't, yeah. Uh, 1295 for the 4K uh, camera, the body alone. If you want to get the video assist, which adds a recorder and a great display, HD is four hundred fifty nine dollars. Four K is eight hundred ninety five dollars. And if you're going out in the field, that's when you might want to get the cinema camera, and that's a thousand dollars. That's a thousand. So it's less expensive. And I will say, um, I I went for open box, and I got the camera for nine hundred, and I got the monitor for six hundred. Oh, that's so, good. And they were perfect. Nothing wrong with it. There's that. nothing wrong with yeah. that.